Batjack JW here, and we have a very special piece right here on the table to show you. Yeah, this is a yeah buddy piece because we're talking about a 1927 Auto Ordnance Thompson. This is the deluxe model, so this is the yeah yeah buddy model right here now if you're like me and you love all those old movies from the 30s and all them old black and white movies because this is what really made those movies jump off the screen now i'm not uh, much into too many rifles but this is one of those rifles that i would definitely take home for sure not many uh rifles get my goat but this one does <laughs> this is super 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 cool because I tell you, so many movies, so much iconic stuff happens right here. And this one's got the vertical uh, grip right there. This is the definite uh, true old school Chicago typewriter. They would call these things uh, room sweeper, organ grinder. <laughs> Just awesome stuff. But one of the things I really like is uh, I love this top yeah, the charging handle. It's really unique. It's like a giant bead really with a, a nice little slot cut into it and it's got all that checkering on it. It's really cool. So there's a couple of cool things about it. Uh, this in here you see it's got the military style stick magazine. Uh, these are 30 rounders. Uh, that was for the military. The civilian uh, ones, they had 10 rounds less. 20. And they're a little bit uh, shorter on profile, but uh, otherwise, uh, same thing. I guess they didn't really care about 10 rounds back then. But uh, the drum magazine holds a whopping 50 rounds. That's right. And that thing was a bear to have into this thing. Now, the one thing about this thing, it's quite uh, heavy. It's got some weight to it. Uh, if you were deployed with one of these back in the day, you uh, probably wouldn't be giving it to a little scrawny bean pole like me. You'd probably give it to somebody a little bit more muscle to them, <laughs> for sure. So anyway, uh, we'll go ahead and look at some accessories we got for this thing, and uh, we'll be right back. Well, we had to go and take care of some dark barking dogs for a second there, so we brought out the uh, Tom again to shape things up. But anyway, moving on over to the front of this baby. This is some really cool stuff that I always liked and it was just makes it iconic. It's part of the iconic look which you got the fin barrel. That was to cut down on some of uh, the heat as a uh, sustained fire would uh, take place with this thing. Also that vertical grip not only helped you kind of stabilize this beast but it kind of kept your hand away from the top of this thing because I would reckon it would get heated up pretty quickly. That uh, cuts compensator on the end there really adds that final cherry on top of the cake because it really makes this thing look awesome. This thing is super cool. It made those 20s roar for sure. Moving on to the back area of this thing, this is really cool because if you're like me, I, stampings, roll marks, all that kind of stuff really uh, catch my attention and this one definitely has some cool ones on it. One of the things I really like is all the patent dates and everything that they put on here uh, from you know John Thompson and all the designing and everything that went into this. The charging handle over here is really neat because first it's uh, basically a giant ball on it with some gnarly uh, you know checkering on it that's really cool. Now one thing you'll see here is check that out. It's got a notch cut right into it. That's so you can see through the sights. <laughs> now I tell you this is a time of the ingenuity of all this stuff is just super cool. The rear sight on this one being the yeah yeah buddy version you got a flip up sight there and you can adjust it and everything so that's that's a pretty cool touch right there the butt stock on this one is removable you can slide it right out by pushing the button and it'll come right off on that thing kind of reminds you of the guys that used to put these under their trench coats in the 30s and 20s and stuff so we'll be moving back around to the other side to check out the other stamps moving on over to this side we got some other really cool roll marks here and uh, that's one thing that really I like about this thing is the roll marks are really cool and a lot of these kind of period uh, this type of uh, firearms and everything like such as the 1911s the roll marks are really awesome on those too and that's why this one definitely replicates a lot of those now like the 1921 the uh, selector switch on this one is not really it's just either fire or safe 
and it just kind of moves down. The other one would have at least had a notch here that you could go the full on fun switch there, or as I like to call it, the spaghetti box. All right, so then uh, we're gonna come over here and you got the magazine release right here, which is kind of interesting because it kind of lifts up like that and then you can see the magazine comes out and everything, that's how that works. So and like I said, this thing is a beast to wield definitely heavy it's got some weight to it and we don't even have rounds in this thing so all right let's move on back before we uh wrap this one up we're going to talk about the magazine because i always thought this was interesting and a lot of people i didn't realize this until i got to mess around with one of these things the way the magazine works is if you notice on this one there's a track right there and this thing has to ride perfectly on the inside here we're lifting up on the magazine release there you got to line it up right as you can see I'm already fumbling with it and it locks right into place that's kind of a interesting thing to think about if you're uh, under battle or under a heat of a situation it can definitely <laughs> mess you up but you know you got to remember during the time when this stuff came around that's what this period really interests me a lot is man this is high-tech stuff back then and without a doubt I would love to have lived in that era the prohibition all that roaring 20s 30s war two where we were just manufacturing everything ourselves everybody was pitching into the war effort when America was America and Americans were Americans thanks for watching I'm Batjack JW like share and subscribe